Good morning, church. My name is Blair Hull. I am new at United Church, at least recently joined, and it is my privilege to give you this message today. You might think I am giving you the Good Friday message, and maybe I am. We have decided that this time during Lent, we will discuss the final words of Jesus. And one of the words that I am instructed to speak today come from the time when he is still on the cross, listening to, as we said, his last words. So I invite you to listen to these words of scripture from which I will be sharing the message this morning. This is from Luke 23, 36 through 46. The soldiers also mocked Jesus, coming up and offering sour wine and saying, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an, an inscription over him, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding to him keep, and kept saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly. For we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then the man spoke directly to Jesus and said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn into. Then Jesus cried with a loud voice and said, Abba, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, Jesus breathed his last. Amen. May these words glorify our God and feed us with new ways of seeing our God. Amen. May these words be to God's glory. As we look at one of these last few words that Jesus spoke, where are we in the story? Who are you? Are you one of the soldiers? Is it your way to presume that it is always okay to hide behind the powerful? To feel safe in that high and mighty place where we feel like we can put each other down. We can put down the poor and the lost and the guilty. We hide behind each other whether we like to admit it or not, and we mock and we deride and we judge, we absolutely believe we are right. Who are you in this story? Are you the robber who thinks that if Jesus were really who he claimed to be, he would save them all? He would say some magic words and poof, they all would escape and return to their lives away from all this danger and death. Or are you the other one? The one hanging on the other side of Jesus. The one who has begun maybe just now to understand. Maybe it is too late to believe that forgiveness for all mistakes and crimes that have been committed is possible, but you know what is right. You are glimpsing what is right as this one hanging 
next to our Jesus. He says, this one has done nothing wrong. The second criminal stands up for Jesus to the first robber, the one who is taunting and being so ridiculous. And instead, this one only asks to be remembered by Jesus. Remembered by Jesus after they die. Or are you like Jesus? who says precious little in this passage in this time. And none of us would want to admit or ask to be like Jesus, for his path was too hard and too dangerous. And now here he is hanging on the cross. And yet this one, this Jesus, is still full of compassion for the one with him. The one who has begun to recognize Jesus as being of God. To this one, Jesus says, you I will see soon in paradise. I will see soon in paradise. Is this part of what it means to be a Christian? that all this suffering is inevitable. For we all do suffer, and it is painful. I kind of think, although we don't want to go through the pain that Jesus went through, and we don't because he went through it for us, but we do like that song, right? Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart, in my heart, Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Well, here's the truth of it. We're all a little like the soldiers, the one looking for magic answers and solutions. And we're all a little like the other one, the one not taunting, but starting to understand who this Jesus is. And yes, in some ways we are like Jesus, maybe only in our hearts, not in our courage or our conviction or our willingness to stand up for what is right, sometimes this is where we fail. But in our heart, that's the place where our love and our peace and our compassion comes from. And yes, we are part of that. Jesus died like this, not because he wanted to, but because the powerful felt threatened. They couldn't take the Jesus whose very body imposed love upon their power structure. Jesus was the threat, teaching too much care, too much compassion, too much non-violence, too much love. He was and is apparently dangerous to them. As scholars Dominic Crossan and Marcus Borg have said, Jesus did not die for the sins of the world. He was killed because of the sin of the world, unquote. As far as an answer to my earlier question, I think we really want to be like the one who stands up for Jesus at the test. We know we're not perfect. We know we're not Jesus but there's nothing more to lose for him. Dying is inevitable. He knows he's sinned. He gives up no excuses. The difference is that this one has recognized Jesus as the one who came. Jesus as the one who did no wrong. Jesus as the one who loves him and us anyway. Jesus the one who loves regardless. Jesus, the one who loves us, no matter what. 
I do believe that we are all today hopeful believers. Maybe we're just beginning to believe this Messiah just a little bit now. Maybe we have believed for a moment or a year or a lifetime. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus didn't keep track of time. Jesus doesn't take attendance. Jesus loves us all just because. Just because love matters. And that's the message he came to give. That's what he said. He recognized and honored that robber who recognized him. It must have felt like some kind of redemption for that one hanging there with him when he heard Jesus say he would see him soon in paradise. This is Palm Sunday. This is the beginning of Holy Week. I invite you to dive into Holy Week. And it's going to be harder this year because we're not together in person. Or some of us are and some of us aren't. It's not the same. And don't get lost in the muddle of the difficulties. But find yourself recognizing what Jesus went through and how he will be resurrected. Some people like to go from the parade of Palm Sunday to the resurrection of Easter. I've said this before many times. And in between are packed these little days of the story. And I've invited people. I said to somebody once, I said, I invite you to go through Holy Week every day. And he said, he didn't want to. And then he thought about it and he said, you're my pastor. I expect you to tell me what to do, but I'm not necessarily going to do it. So what is this Holy Week all about? It's about recognizing death and resurrection, maybe with chocolate and bunnies. This resurrection we're waiting for, it's worth it to journey through Holy Week, to wait for the great ending. Amen and amen.